Welcome to another Food the Glory 2 guide video. This is on chariots. So, there are two categories of chariots and two subcategories within each. There's light chariots and heavy chariots. And within each, there are light spear chariots and bow chariots. But the way the two swords function is pretty different. So, we can see all the different types of chariots in the game here. So, we have our various light spear, light chariots. Bow Light Chariots, Light Spear Heavy Chariots, and Bow Heavy Chariots. Alright, well, so functionally, Heavy Chariots are fairly similar to Cataphracts. They are unmaneuverable, so they don't get the free 45 degree turn. They don't move very far. They are severely disordered in rough ground. And they count as Shock Cavalry. I got into that in a bit. Light chariots, despite the name, are non-light units. They are simply light compared to heavy chariots. They can still cause automatic cohesion drops against non-light enemy units. They do get the free 45 degree turn. I mean, we're on reduced CC here because I didn't assign a general in the editor. But they normally get it, and they're only moderately disordered in terrain. Okay, so these units are most common in the Bronze Age. And that matters in terms of their strengths and weaknesses and what kind of units are most effective against. So, for example, taking a look here, this bow chariot. Zagros warriors are impact foot, pretty common troop type in Bronze Age. So heavy chariot impact against most types of foot is 150. Then we get troop quality plus 50, and the impact foot get their 100 impact. However, you can see a stream here. It's not a disordering stream, it's just non-open. Taking a look with this Light Spear Heavy Chariot, we get the Light Spear 50 and the quality, but we do not get Heavy Chariot 150 because it is non-open terrain. It must be open terrain to apply. Another problem is Steady Spearmen. So defensive or often Spearmen, also Pikemen, but that matchup doesn't really happen. Reduces the heavy cherry impact from 150 to 50. So you are not likely to just smash through a line of spearmen. However, these units are limited to uh, a smaller number of lists in the time period. Like all mounted units, chariots get plus 100 against bowmen in open terrain. So again, even with just the stream, you can see the reduction. So this is like plus 350 or something. It goes to plus 100, or it goes from plus 150 to plus 50. Note also, Steady Spearmen don't just reduce Heavy Chariot Impact, they also reduce Heavy Chariot Melee capability from, I believe, 100 yep, to 50. All right, what else do we have? So one thing to keep in mind is that mass bowmen without melee capability, you know, within two tiles of non-light troops with melee capability, as how it's generally described, get this shooting malice, pretty chunky, minus 23%. Note that this light chariot doesn't actually have a melee capability, but for the purposes of this interaction, it's considered to have one. So only 4 to 12 by these Sparabara having melee capabilities can ignore that and shoot much more strongly accordingly. Also, this light chariot, so even though it has no melee capabilities, in the open like this, the mounted versus bowman does some heavy lifting. 67 to win impact. Sparabara are also bowmen, but they get their integrated light spear. So it's much less effective. And note also that against light horse, the malice doesn't get applied. Well, that's a side note to our issue of chariots here. Next up, heavy chariots are shock cavalry. So what does this mean? Well, infantry charging shock cavalry don't get their impact in the shock cavalry, even if these are, say, spearmen, get the full 150 heavy chariot. Whereas light chariots are not shock cavalry. So for example, here, the light spear this Sparabara applies. Light chariots can evade. 
heavy chariots cannot. Looking at further interactions here, one uh, edge cave doesn't come up too much, but heavy chariot impact does not apply against lancers. So here, this heavy chariot gets light spear, gets troop quality, but nothing else. So if this is a bow chariot, especially, it would be quite painful. But I don't think that interaction is likely unless you do some weird uh, time travel stuff. Another interaction, this you do see, 40 point armored cavalry, 36 point Celtic chariots. On uh, impact, the Celts are up. In melee, light chariots do not get a melee capability. So this is an interesting interaction, which they can do well in impact and kind of neutralize things, or they can try to maybe avoid enemy cavalry. An oddity. Heavy Chariot Impact does not apply against Lightfoot. You're only going to see this difference in open terrain where the Mounted versus Lightfoot does apply, and where Light Infantry will always evade. But, it does make a little bit of a difference. It means that Heavy Chariots in this situation are up plus 50 instead of the plus 200, you would think. So... That's POA interactions. What does that mean in terms of usage? I'm not going to do a massive amount of talking about this because I think it would take a very long video to cover it comprehensively. But we can run down briefly broad usages of the four types of chariots. So light spear, light chariots. Well, they're not going to be taking any sort of infantry head on unless your opponent is so foolish as to just dump massed archers out in the open, which they're probably not going to do. So instead, they can be used either in an offensive or a defensive manner. In an offensive manner, uh, if you have enough of them that you feel confident in taking down the enemy, whether it's a weaker cavalry wing or a more expensive and the smaller bow chariot wing, killing that or driving it off, then using the maneuverability and speed to get behind the enemy foot to intervene in the center. Against heavy chariots, well, they're not that much use, but again, they can use their mobility to impose zones of control and then evade when charged or threaten automatic cohesion drops to force the heavy chariots into a more passive style of play. Light bow chariots, this very much depends on what you're fighting, but you know, they can harass heavy chariots quite effectively and they can do okay against light spear chariots, although it's not points effective. These are, you know, 44. The light spear chariots are generally 36. They can charge bowmen and they can set up drops as well. Heavy chariots, it depends. The bow ones, you know, if you're facing a line of spearmen, they can simply use their shock status to zone them out, slow them down, and shoot them. Uh, both varieties can just utterly smash through impact foot or light spear foot or bowmen and the like in open terrain. If there is substantial terrain, you don't want to bring a bunch of these. If you have a light spear heavy chariot army and the enemy has a bunch of light bow light chariots, you probably don't want to bring these. You can't catch them. They can't do much. So, you know, washing out a bunch of subtleties. In general, heavy chariots are going to operate more frequently in the center of the battle line. Light chariots on the wings where their maneuverability is actually useful. One final note, I'll probably have to make a video on combat strength modifier at some point. So heavy chariots have a strength of 150. Celtic chariots, so these light spear light chariots have a strength of 100, as opposed to 240 for these cavalry units. But combat strength modifier, none. So combat strength modifier is kind of based on the number of men, but the number of men is based more on a integral unit statistic, which is the number of bases of a unit and the number of men per base of a unit. We don't, we don't have to get into the weeds with that, but suffice to say that the number of bases is four for each of these. So chariot units have no combat strength disadvantage against cavalry. So that's a broad overview. Heavy chariots, kind of like cataphracts. Some of them can shoot, stay away from terrain. Light chariots, not so effective in the center of the battle line, but can be a real force multiplier to win over the flanks. Both of them 
bowmen have to watch out. Against cavalry, uh, it's kind of situational. Their low cost can come in quite useful. So, that's that.